As you know, Apache comes installed and configured with your XAMPP installation, but you might need to install it or configure it yourself at some point, which is why it's important to at least understand and know how the configuration looks like and how to change it if needed. In this video, we will go over the very basics of Apache configuration, how to rewrite URLs using HT access and so on. Even though this is not directly part of PHP, but rather it's part of Apache itself, I think it's still an important topic, which is why I decided to include it in this course. Let's talk about the Apache configuration file first. The location of the configuration file will depend on a few factors, but the default location is something like user local Apache 2 conf. For XAMPP, however, this configuration file is within the XAMPP Apache conf directory and you could also access this from the XAMPP control panel. So you could click on config and click on apache httpd.conf and this is your Apache configuration file. We can also just browse the Apache directory and within here we see the configuration directory and that's where your configuration file is. In addition to the configuration file, you could also view logs from these directories. So if we go back to the Apache directory, we see the logs directory here and that's where the several logs will be stored. You could also open this from the control panel so you could click on logs and open Apache access log or Apache error log. The location of these log files also depend on a few factors and you're able to customize them from the configuration file which we'll cover in a minute. The default location of the logs I think is something like var log httpd but for xamp it's within apache logs directory. So let's go over the apache configuration file. I'm going to open that from here. The configuration file contains one directive per line and the number sign here indicates that it's a comment so it will be ignored. As you can see the file is well documented and it's mostly self-explanatory. So let's scroll down a bit and this is where you configure your server root. Let me zoom in a little bit here and don't confuse this with the document root which is the root directory of your website which we'll get into in a minute. If we keep scrolling we see the default port that Apache listens and if we keep on scrolling we see a bunch of modules being loaded. And my Modules are basically just extensions of Apache. So let's continue scrolling and then we see this section here. You could include certain directives conditionally only if specific module is present. That is what's happening here. If Unix D module is present, then include the following directives. If we scroll down more, we see server admin and server name, and that's our local host that we access in the browser. This can be changed here or from the virtual hosts, which we'll talk about it in a minute. Next, we see something called the scope directive section. So this and this, for example, are scope directive sections. When directives are placed in the main configuration file, outside of the sections they are applied to the entire server. However you could scope the directives and then close them in sections to only apply them to certain parts of the server. For example you could apply them to specific files, directories or URLs and you could even nest multiple scoped sections if needed. In this case right here the scope is not really specified to a specific directory but rather all directories on server. So as the comment says it simply denies access to the entire file system of the server you need to explicitly allow access to specific directories and if we look right below that's what's happening right here we're allowing certain access to the htdocs directory we'll talk about the allow override setting in a bit but basically it controls what directives can be used within the hc access files also note here the document root setting this is where the document root is set just a quick note that this configuration file will be different for production and depending on what you use this is just a configuration file that xamp comes with. But knowing what these directives are and overall basic knowledge will help you create your own files or understand existing servers configuration files. So if we keep scrolling we see another scoped section here which basically indicates that all files that start with .ht are denied. So files like htaccess or htpasswd will not be able to be accessed. Also quick note that even though you are able to put most of these directives within these scoped sections some of them don't make sense to be put in certain sections. I'm going to leave the link in the description where you can read more about it if needed. So if we continue scrolling right below it here, this is a default location of the error log file. So let's keep scrolling. 
and we see a bunch of includes here. And let me explain what that is. You're able to include other configuration files using the include directive, which allows you to split and organize your configuration files. So instead of putting all of your configurations into one file, you could actually split them and put them into separate configuration files and then include them within your main configuration file. And one of the important files here is the HTTPD vhosts configuration file, and that's the virtual host. And that's what we'll talk about next. We can go to the configuration directory and then within extra, and we see vhosts here. So let's open that. So what are virtual hosts? You could run multiple websites on a single server at the same time. This is called virtual hosting, which in simple terms just means that you can run more than one website on a single machine. You can have IP or name-based websites, meaning that you can have different IPs for each website, or you could have a different name for each website for the same IP. You're able to apply configuration directives to specific hosts or websites by using the virtual hosts scope directive so if we scroll down here this is the scope directive that you could use and apply the directives within it only to that specific website right now everything is commented out but as you notice in the url we have localhost program with geo but what if i want to access the website using something like program with geo.local so we could use virtual hosts to achieve that so let's uncomment the first one here and the only directives that we care from here is the document root and server name and let's actually keep the server name commented out for now and let's change the document root to htdocs program with geo note that the changes to configuration files take effect only after starting or restarting apache server so we need to restart going to stop and start and now if i go to localhost it prints hello world so we don't need to add slash program with geo anymore but now the issue is if i add another website or application when i visit localhost how would it know which one to load so that's where the server name comes in so we could set the server name to something like program with geo dot local and for this to work we need to point this domain to our localhost ip address in the hosts file so let's restart the apache again and let's open the host file. The host file on the Windows is located under Windows System32 Drivers ETC directory. So here at the end, we can point our localhost IP address, which is this, to our domain, which is program with geo.local. And now if we try to visit program with geo.local, we see that it prints hello world. All right, so now you know how to work with Apache servers configuration files. If you're still watching this video, it means that I was not too boring. So thank you, and let's move on to HD access files. HD access files are just configuration files, also called distributed configuration files that allow you to make configuration changes on a per directory basis. So if we put HD access file in this directory, for example, where our project is, it will apply the configuration changes to this directory and any subdirectories within it. HD access files are read on every request and changes to these files are effective immediately, meaning that you don't need to restart the Apache server. A quick note that not not all directives can be placed in HD access files. You should check the context of the directive in the documentation. And also the main configuration file controls what directives can be placed in HD access files. Remember that allow override directive in the main configuration file that we talked about a few minutes ago? That's the one. So if we scroll up here, we see allow override none here, which does not allow overriding for anything, but within the HD docs directory, we allow overriding. So we can see allow override all. It is highly recommended that you don't use HD access files unless you really need to. The reason behind that is because HD access files, as mentioned before, are read on every request and it can impact the server's performance. Any configuration that you can put in HD access file can also be put in the main configuration file and be scoped to specific directory. So what's the point of HD access files then? And why am I even covering it in this lesson? Well, you don't always have root access to the server and not always have access to the main configuration file. Shared hosting providers, for example, they will not give you full access to the main configuration file, but instead they let you overwrite some of the configurations through HD access files. So that's one use case where you would want to use HD access files. But if you do have access to the main configuration file, then I would suggest to disable HD access entirely by setting allow override to none. That way server does not even attempt to look for HD access files. The most common usage of HD access files that I've seen is 
to rewrite URLs. And while that is perfectly fine, if you have access to the main configuration file, you could simply move that rewrite rules into the main configuration file and it will work just fine. Or even better, move it into a separate configuration file and include it from the main configuration file the same way vhost's file is included. Or you could simply just add those directives within your virtual host section. I will show you a simple example of how to rewrite URLs using HT Access and then how to do the same thing without using HT Access file. For that, we need to use something called mod rewrite module, and mod rewrite module allows you to rewrite and manipulate request URLs. You could perform redirect, you could do pattern matching using regular expressions, and so on. So right now, if we were to add another page here, something like about.php, in order to access this page, we need to type in about.php in the browser, and it will work. But notice here we're adding .php extension here, and that's not a good user experience. Also, what if you wanted to have SEO? friendly or pretty URLs? Or what if you wanted to have a single entry point to your application from which you bootstrap the application and control how the requests and responses are handled? We'll talk more about things like routing later, so don't worry about it now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a public directory and put our index.php there and then create HD access file to direct the traffic through that index.php file. And then we can decide within that index.php file which page to load. So let's create a new directory here called public and let's move the index here. And this index file will basically be our entry point to the application. The next thing we need to do is we need to update our vhosts. So in here we need to change the document root to be public so that it loads the index.php from the public directory. Let's restart the Apache and now if we refresh the page everything still works. And we did not need to put the word public in the URL. Now let's add the support to pretty URLs. And by pretty URLs else I mean things like about or maybe blog your host title and so on. So we need to tell our server to process all of these requests through a proxy index.php. So index.php will be our entry point to the application. So let's create HT access file here. And the first thing we need to check is if mod rewrite module is enabled. And we can use the if module directive here. So if module mod rewrite.c. The next thing we need to do is we need to turn on the rewrite engine. And then we need to write our conditions and rules. For the condition we need to make sure that the requested file name is not an actual file or a directory. The reason we're adding these two conditions here is because we don't want physical directories or physical files to be processed by our index.php. For example, if user were to request an asset like an image or a CSS or JavaScript file that's under public directory, we don't want to process that through index.php. We can just serve it as is. That is the main reason why we have these two conditions here. So let's write our rewrite rule and we will simply direct everything to index.php. Now if we visit about it will print hello world because that's what index.php is doing. If we visit any other page it will also print hello world. So as you can see all of these requests are going through index.php. So how could we actually have it load an about page? Well that can be done by parsing the URL and requiring the necessary file or by using something called routing which we'll cover later in this course. But basically we can just far down request the URI here and we see that blog post one is the requested URL and then we could parse this and extract it that blog is our page and post one is maybe the parameter that we pass and so on and I don't want to cover that in this video we will cover all that later in the course I just wanted to show you an example use case of HD access file now as promised let's do the same thing without using HD access file so I'm going to actually copy this and put it under the vhosts because we want to apply this to this specific website. You could of course put this into the main configuration file if you want to apply it to everything. But in this case, I just want to apply it to this website. The one change we need to make here is that index.php, we need to have a slash here so that it loads the index.php from the document root and our document root is set to public. So we save this. Let's delete the HT access. Let's refresh. And we're getting not found. And that's because I did not restart the Apache. So that shows that without HD access, this pretty URLs will not work. But now if I restart Apache and refresh page, everything is back to normal. So as you can see, the HD access file is really not needed in this case. Note that we covered the very basics of Apache configuration and basics of URL rewriting. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy my tutorials, please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Stay tuned for the cool stuff to come in the near future and I'll see you next time.